Nerd Gear TV. Let me ask you something. What do you do when you want to add power steering to your classic car? Your old muscle car doesn't have power steering. You gotta add power steering to it. What do you do? What do you do when you want to add power steering to your mini bike build? What do you do when you want to add power steering to your Chinese dune buggy build turbo project with 350 horsepower? I'll tell you what you do. You tune into Dirt Gear TV and you watch this video. That's right, I'm gonna show you guys how you can add power steering to any project you want, whether it's a go-kart, mini bike, classic car, aircraft, roller coaster, quadcopter, literally anything you want, we can add power steering to it. I'm gonna show you how to do that today on Dirt Gear TV, so stick around. is an electric power steering setup off of a 2014 Kia Soul. The cool thing about these electric power steering modules is the Prius is not the only one that has the adaptive electric steering setup. The ones that you're gonna pull or find on eBay out of a Prius are probably gonna cost you at least 250 bucks plus shipping because they're very popular and people know that you can use those in a fail-safe mode to add power steering to your vehicle. There are other systems on the market that are not quite as highly desirable as the Prius systems that you can find for a little bit less of a cost. Now I'm going to put below in the description a list of years and vehicles that you can get one of these systems out of. I chose the Kia because this entire system with the ECU module only cost me 150 bucks. This is one thing I like about this particular unit is the ECU mounts right to it. It's all one piece. So you've got your power, you've got your ground, and then there's another connector here. But if you don't have a connector for this, uh, I will show you how you can test your unit even without that connector, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So that's the input side, this is the output side, right? So we're going to go ahead and hook up our battery terminal here. Clip this on to the negative. I'm using the 2014 Kia Soul. I will link this below so you guys can see the pinout. If we zoom into this picture here, it is pin number one is our power pin. Let me do this. I'm going to connect our power. Now, it will take a few seconds to start up. It just, it mimics what I'm doing exactly. When I put just a little bit of force on this one, this one has 10 times the force. It's completely silent. I'm just gonna lightly turn this one. There's no slop, there's no play. I mean, it's quick. There's no delay or anything. It just, whatever the input is, it just amplifies it. It wouldn't be dirt gear if we didn't weigh this. So let's go ahead and get a weight on this thing. I'm guessing it's about 12 pounds. Ooh, 14.92 pounds. So not terrible. I have spent well over an hour looking for this connector that I'm missing. This one over here, same connector. So it's an eight pin. I found one place in the entire internet that I could identify this. They wanted $87 for this connector and they go up to like $200 per connector. Out of just principle alone, I'm not gonna do that. So I'm gonna find another approach. So this is our ECU. connector and the pin in question here, that pin right there. The pin furthest towards this connector and the top.
Don't mind the wiring. I was just using that to balance my motor to see how everything comes together. So we've got it sanded here and uh, I trimmed this guy down, cut a little bit of an angle here and that to match right there. The way that it did mount was it was coming down on an angle this way. But since we're changing the side that this mounts to, this one will actually angle up a little bit like that. We'll still be able to use the same bracket, same mount. This will just uh, get mounted on this side now like that instead. So the hardest part about this was just going to be able to shorten everything enough. And even with shortening this thing way down, I was still worried that I wasn't going to have enough. Normally this goes here and then there's like another tube that connects over here that slides over that shaft and that's what connects to your steering wheel. Now, because I'm not using this as a hard mount for the steering wheel, I don't need to have this thing, I didn't need to have the, the leverage and the support that this piece offers. This is just basically gonna be a connection, a direct connection between this and that. But my steering wheel is actually gonna be supported by this original bracket. So that's why I don't need this guy on my setup. Okay, so it's gonna kinda look like this. The point that I'm trying to make here is look at how minimal the clearance is. I mean, look at the angles on this thing, even where it's at, like that's too steep. But I gotta try to move this thing as far forward, meaning as far towards the driver as possible, because I've just got so little space to work with here. I'll still use this to clamp on and to grab that side, but the other side of it will just simply get welded right onto that shaft. This is the side that's powered. So all of that is gonna be under heavy torque, but this side here is not gonna be under heavy torque because that's, that's the input side, of course. My silicone has dried nicely, so that's gonna give us a nice watertight seal. And I do still have to figure out how this guy's gonna get mounted, so that's what I'm working on next. Making good progress. You can see we've got new steering wheel mounted. Of course, this is gonna get painted, so I know it's ugly and rusty now. Now, in terms of how to mount our motor here, originally what I was thinking I would do is have a cross brace across here. And I think what they were doing is they had a little bracket that just comes down and, you know, has a through bolt that goes on either side. So once I get that cross brace mounted and then build a little bracket here, that should give pretty good stability to that.
Thank you.